Hello, fight fans. I'm Michael Montero, and you're watching The Neutral Corner for the week of November 21st. All right, so we got a jam-packed weekend full of boxing. Last week, it was kind of dull in the boxing world, but there was some big news in the MMA world. And uh, normally, I'd do a ring walk, but I'm going to use the ring walk segment this week to kind of just share some thoughts I had about the whole uh, Holly Holm upset Ronda Rousey thing and some of the reaction I've seen. And, you know, I just shot a video about it. I'm debating whether I'm going to release this video I just shot. I don't know, because I kind of I kind of go off. Um, I think a lot of boxing fans are excited, obviously, because Holly Holm, who was a boxer for 11 years, won titles. She was one of the better boxers of her era at that time, female boxers. Um, she went in there and she beat Ronda Rousey and she didn't just win, score a freak knockout or something, right? It, it was a uh, really a domination. Honestly, it looked like she just flat out outclassed Ronda Rousey and she used her boxing skills. She used kickboxing skills as well because I guess she used to do kickboxing too. Um, she's just an overall freak stud martial artist, right? Boxing and kickboxing. But uh, the footwork that she used and the punching and everyone keeps showing that knockout kick. The, you know, I see that gif over and over on uh, Twitter and stuff like that. But what they're not showing is just before that, Holm landed a big shot that, uh, that pretty much did the damage. And, and Rousey was on her way down anyway. And all through the fight, she would... Her footwork was better, her boxing, her shots were straighter. They were getting to Rousey a half second before Rousey's shots were coming back. She made Rousey miss and look amateurish. And that's why I think a lot of boxing fans are excited for the win, even though, look guys, let's be honest, most of us didn't give a shit about this fight, this UFC 193 thing. Now we care because the boxer won, right? At least that's the attitude I'm seeing a lot of that out there and um, you know I'm just a little disappointed in some of the memes I'm seeing in some of the stuff I'm seeing on Facebook and Twitter where I, I just see memes of uh, Ronda Rousey laying on her back and Manny Pacquiao's laying on top of her and it'll say like TBE and show a picture of Floyd Mayweather or some shit guys that's so tasteless it's so classless and honestly, you know, Floyd fans, look, man, Floyd didn't knock out Manny Pacquiao. He didn't knock out uh, Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Juan Manuel Marquez knocked out Manny Pacquiao. Holly Holm knocked out Ronda Rousey. So I understand that there's been this thing going back between Floyd Mayweather and Ronda Rousey. And look, a lot of Ronda Rousey MMA fans hate my guts because I made videos expressing my opinions about her being a hype job and the fact that I personally felt she was going to get exposed as soon as she fought a world-class athlete. I just happened to think that person would be that, that cyborg chick, not this Holly Holm girl, because I didn't know what kind of shape Holly Holm was in. Usually when people who boxed for 11 years go into MMA, you know, I'm thinking guys like James Tony, Ray Mercer, they don't look too good. They go to MMA because they can't get licensed in boxing anymore and they're shot to shit, right? And they, they're desperate for money. Now, I wasn't educated enough on Holly Holm's situation. That's not why she went to MMA. She accomplished everything she could in boxing and she wanted a new challenge. It's that simple. So, um, you know, props to Holly Holm. I am happy for boxing. I'm happy that somebody was able to use their boxing skills to kind of express an opinion I've had that a lot of you guys out there have that boxing just pound for pound on average has the better athletes than MMA because we have a bigger talent pool. Boxing is one of the most global sports on earth, right? Contact sports. Name me one more contact sport that has more uh, global representation than boxing. I can't think of one, you know? Um, so the talent pool is so deep in boxing and even for female boxing, right? Uh, versus female MMA that I just thought, you know, the, the second Rousey gets in there, look, Rousey was what, like 11-0 going into this fight, I think, 10-0, 11-0. And, 
I mean, in boxing, you're a prospect if you're 11 and 0, right? There are guys out there that you know have 20 fights, and we don't consider them a contender yet. So. I feel you boxing fans. I understand your uh, frustrations and, and you know this, uh, this gut reaction that a lot of us had. And, and I'm guilty myself. I, I sent some tweets and posted some stuff, but look, man, let, let's keep it civil and let's keep it classy, guys. You know, we don't have to uh, beat somebody when they're down. I remember when Pacquiao got knocked out by Marquez, just all the memes and the stuff that I saw, especially from the, the TMT crew, it, it was just disgusting, man. And, and now I'm seeing memes of Holly Holm in TMT gear and shit. It's like, guys, you didn't give a shit about Holly Holm a week ago, be honest. So, you know, um, I, you know I, I almost feel bad for Rousey right now because I think the reaction has just been over the top. So guys, boxing fans, my boxing brothers, let's clean up our own house before we throw stones at our neighbor's house, okay? That's just, that's it, that's my rant. And uh, let's get into the previews for this week's action in boxing. So there was nothing to review last week, right? We're just gonna get into the, the previews this week and uh, all the attention obviously is on the big fight in Las Vegas this Saturday, but Friday night in Vegas, there's a, there's a couple of cards going on. Um, I'm gonna be at uh, one of them and I, you know, I had a choice between the two. Uh, the ones at the Cosmo, ones at the Hard Rock, I think. I'm interested in this Gilberto Ramirez character. This guy is a Mexican super middleweight, about 6'2". Uh, tall, good-looking guy, has a great personality, needs to learn English, but there's a lot of potential there. He's 32-0, 24 knockouts. Going up against a uh, fighter I've never heard of, uh, Gavorg Kachikian from the Netherlands. And the only thing I've noticed about this Kachikian guy is he lost by TKO to James DeGale last year. But for Ramirez, um, there's a lot of potential. And uh, there's, he's still a prospect, you know, he, he's got 32 fights. I'm not ready to call this guy a contender yet, at least not for a title. But um, I saw him earlier this year at the, uh, the Rio Silverado rubber match in Denver. I was ringside for that fight out there and I, I, Ramirez fought a Russian, uh, Max, Maxim Vlasov. And he won a decision, a very disputed decision. There were some people that feel that could have been a draw. It was a very, very close fight. And I'm curious to see what kind of developments he's made since then. He did have one other fight since then, but I, I haven't seen it. So um, I'll be ringside for this one. I wanna see if he's made improvements from that fight because that Russian fighter, Vlasov, he gave him some problems just with his craft. You know, these Russians, they come up in an amateur system over there, they know how to box. And he was able to give Ramirez some problems, but um, I'm curious, you know, what, what he's going to do. But uh, if you can, check that fight out. This Gilberto Ramirez, again, 32-0, Mexican southpaw, tall, super middleweight. That division, super middleweight, is wide open right now. There's no kingpin. There's a bunch of titles floating around. And I just think Ramirez is a fighter two away for maybe challenging for one of them, but he's got to show me something, some improvement in this fight Friday night. Now, Saturday night, we have some action over in Europe. Um, speaking about super middleweight, in Hanover, Germany, Arthur Abraham is defending his WBO super middleweight title against Martin Murray. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what it is. I've just never been very, very high on Arthur Abraham. Very good chin has good power, but he telegraphs everything. He just telegraphs everything. And I was ringside for his fight against Andre Ward out here in LA in 20, 2011 uh, at the StubHub Center. Well, then it was the Home Depot Center. And look, Andre Ward obviously is a great talent. He's a great boxer. And this was in 2011 when Andre Ward was actually doing things and impressing us. And he just completely neutralized everything Abraham tried to do. He was just a step ahead of him the whole time. And 
Several fighters have done that with Abraham, right? He fought uh, Darrell, and I just thought Darrell just totally just hustled him, right? We all know what happened at the end of that fight. But Darrell just made him look amateurish. And even against Carl Frosch, I thought Carl Frosch just thoroughly dominated this guy. So to me, when he steps up to the highest level of talent, Abraham struggles, right? And in the last two years, Abraham has fought Robert Stieglitz and Paul Smith twice. Not exactly a murderer's row. And there was one other fighter in between there, some guy I never heard of. So he's kind of been defending his titles over there in Germany, where he has a big fan base, against less than stellar opposition. Now we look at Martin Murray, who at middleweight, a lot of people feel he was just flat out robbed against Felix Sturm. I can't remember what year they fought. I want to say 2012, maybe. It might have been 2011, and it was a draw. But pretty much everybody, every media member, thought that Murray should have won that fight. And then he fought uh, Sergio Martinez. I want to say that was 2013, maybe. And he dropped Martinez um, in, a, in a difficult situation. He's down there in Martinez's home country, right? So uh, Murray's used to fighting on the road, fighting Sturm in Germany, fighting Martinez down in Argentina. And a lot of people thought that he might have won that fight against Martinez. Now, I thought Martinez did just enough to eke out that victory. But that's still when Martinez was very, very good. And he gave him a tough fight, man. Now, look, against Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, when he lost, uh, I think it was 11th round TKO. Who else takes Gennady Golovkin 11 rounds right now, right? Martin Rory was doing all this at 160 pounds. He's now moved to 168. And I think that extra weight helps him a little bit. He's a few inches taller, a couple years younger than Abraham, but he's taken some punishment. So has Abraham. But both of these guys have good chins. I think Abraham's got the better chin. Abraham's got the better power. But I just think Murray, overall, has faced better opposition, at least in recent years, and performed better against top-level opposition than Abraham has. This fight's in Germany. I think Murray's going to have to really clearly win rounds, but this is a real good chance for Martin Murray to win a world title. I think, I think Abraham's the favorite here, you know, the odds and everything online, but Murray is a very live dog in this fight. Um, he's he's got to win probably eight rounds to get a decision, but don't be surprised if he pulls this out here and he gets this title. This is probably his last chance at the title. Also in the UK, in Manchester, Anthony Crowley fighting against Darlis Perez in a, in a rematch uh, for a lightweight title. Talk about robbery, right? These guys fought uh, was it July, we'll say it was July, and uh, Perez was low blowing this shit out. He was like, I guess he thought uh, Anthony's balls were a speed bag or something because he was just killing it. And he actually had two points docked for low blows. Even with those two points docked, majority draw was the outcome. And a lot of media, not just in the UK, but here in the United States as well. I remember reading a column in Ring Magazine, where Ring Magazine here thought that the, the British fighter should have won that fight. I know Hearn, the promoter over there, immediately called for a rematch, right? So here they are rematching just a few months later. Um, I like the Englishman here. I like Crawler on this fight. And uh, it's going to be a tough one. Perez ain't coming to lose. I see it going the distance, but I think he's going to uh, put a stamp on it this time and make it very, very clear. And I think he gets the nod in this one. Now, let's talk about the big fights uh, here in Vegas this uh, Saturday. And again, I'll be ringside going up to Vegas in a couple days. And uh, main event. Now, I did a preview video on... Cotto Canelo. You guys can find that on my channel. So I don't need to really go into all the details here. I'll just tell you that as long as Canelo doesn't have any problems making weight, and he hasn't so far in his career, you know, but he's a big ass middleweight. And at some point he's going to have problems making weight. Will it be this fight? Will it be the next fight? I don't know. But this is at 155 pounds. If there's no problems for him making weight, I think Canelo scores a late stoppage in this fight. If there's a real struggle to make weight, he looks really, really drained at that weigh-in, 
it probably goes the distance. But I just like the younger guy in this fight. Kodo is going to try to use movement. He's going to try to counter punch. And I think that will work early for him. If this fight was four years ago, I would have favored Kodo. But at this stage, I know he's looked good lately, but he's looked good against hobbled opposition, right? When he fought Martinez, Martinez was just broken. His body was broken. He's not the same guy. He's not the same guy that Martin Murray fought just the year before, right? So Kodo's looked very, very good under Freddie Roach. I think that Kodo has the much better corner in this fight. I'm not sold on che uh, Chepo Reynoso. They've done a good job with uh, Canelo, but he still doesn't cut off the ring good enough for me and some other things. But he's not going to have to cut off the ring in this fight. Kodo is a lot more plodding and flat-footed than guys like Iris Landilara, Floyd Mayweather, that gave Kodo problems. So, or I'm sorry, Canelo problems when they fought. So even though I think Kodo's gonna win some early rounds, I like Canelo by late TKO or decision, depending on the weight situation. Now on the undercard, Japanese fighter Takashi Miura is fighting Francisco Vargas of Mexico for a 130 pound title. This, possibly could steal the show. I don't know yet. You know, I, I do think that Kodo Canelo is gonna be a really, really good fight. Possible fight of the year candidate. But again, I'm filming this several days before. I'm even up in Vegas and I can see these guys at the gym. I can see them at the weigh-in. All those things may change how I feel about that main event. I like this co-feature. Uh, both of these guys throw a lot of punches. The Japanese fighter Miura has a 67% knockout percentage. Vargas has a 70% knockout percentage. Um, even though they're pretty much the same age, I think Vargas is only a, a year younger. Um, Vargas started his career later. I think Vargas started his career in 2009 as a pro. So he doesn't have as many fights, doesn't have as much wear and tear on him as the Japanese fighter. He also had a more uh, distinguished amateur background. He was a 2008 Olympian from Mexico. I think all that favors him. I think there's gonna be a lot of punches thrown in this fight. If, uh, if you're a fantasy boxing guy, you know, and, and you, you're trying to figure out who you want to draft, this fight is going to have a lot of punches. I think there's going to be more punches thrown and landed in this fight than the main event. So book, book on that, okay? But uh, I like the Mexican in this by decision. And also on the undercard, Randy Caballero is making his return from a 13-month layoff. He's kind of getting a layup as far as his opponent. Guillermo Rigondeau who I haven't been very easy on recently. I've been pretty critical of. Uh, he's returning from an 11 month layoff and he's getting a layup opponent. So obviously I'd like both of those guys to win big. But um, main event, you know, guys, there's not a lot of buzz for this card. There should be more buzz for Cotto Canelo. I really do think that screw what happened May 2nd. Forget about that. This is the boxing event of the year, and we should be talking about that. Stop tweeting about Rousey and Holm. Start tweeting about this fight. Start talking to your friends and posting on Facebook about Cotto Canelo. We need to start hyping this shit up. I'm just not seeing the buzz on social media. Maybe when the fight gets you know later in the week or something, we'll see more. But right now, there's just not enough buzz, man. So let's start talking about this one. Let's stop talking about... Ronda Rousey losing. You know they're going to do a rematch and make a ton of money. Dana White is loving it. Let's stop talking about that. Let's talk about Cotto Canelo. <laughs> Speaking of that, comment below. Let me know what you think. Share this video with your friends. I'll see you guys ringside.